So in this lovely video, we are going to be talking about polar bonds and polar molecules versus nonpolar bonds and nonpolar molecules. Okay, so what the heck does that mean? And let's make sure to understand this, you have to understand electronegativity first, okay? Please make sure you understand um, what electronegativity is because that will help us understand polar bonds, okay? So if I had a hydrogen bonded to another hydrogen versus a hydrogen bonded to a chlorine, okay? And I'm gonna show my lone pairs here, that way we show that chlorine has a full valence shell and isn't like desperately looking to stabilize himself, okay? All right, so these are both covalent bonds, all right? We, we have non-metals bonded to other non-metals, okay? However, the electrons that are shared between these covalent bonds are actually not shared equally. And that's because we have a polar bond and a non-polar bond here, okay? So if we think about a pole, okay, um, like the North Pole or the South Pole, or if you know anything about magnets, right? Magnets have poles, like a North Pole and a South Pole of a magnet. Okay, it just means like opposite sides, right? So there are actually like differences between a North Pole and a South Pole, right? Um, so if you have a polar bond, all right, that means that there are actual differences between, between the poles, between whatever atoms are on the other side of the bond. If I have something that's nonpolar, okay, if I have something that's nonpolar, that means there's no difference in how those electrons are shared between the two atoms. Okay, so nonpolar would be that your electrons are shared equally, okay? And in this example of a hydrogen bonding to another hydrogen, okay, both hydrogens are going to pull on these shared electrons the exact same amount, okay? They, neither one of them, imagine a game of tug of war, right? Both of these hydrogens have the exact same strength as each other. They have the same electronegativity, okay? They are both attracting those electrons at the exact same amount. So these electrons are shared completely evenly, equally between the two hydrogens versus hydrogen and chlorine, okay? This is actually a polar bond. My electrons are not shared equally. And the way I figure this out is with electronegativity. So these guys are going to have a difference in electronegativity. Remember, electronegativity is the ability to attract an electron, right? And here's my periodic table, right? The trend is up and to the right. Okay, chlorine's over here, hydrogen's way over here, okay? Chlorine has a much higher ability to attract electrons than hydrogen. Chlorine is much more electronegative than hydrogen. Chlorine can attract the electrons within that bond, within this covalent bond. Chlorine is much more attractive to those electrons than hydrogen is. So even though there's two electrons in this bond, they actually are shared closer to chlorine, okay? So imagine it looks like this, okay? Instead of them sharing equally, like hydrogen in a non-polar bond, these electrons are like, oh, dang, chlorine, you are looking good. You are very attractive. You are high in electronegativity. I want to be closer to you, okay? So they kind of move over this way to chlorine. This would make a polar bond. And what that means is we basically create, quote unquote, poles, okay? you are creating a North Pole and a South Pole, or a positive pole and a negative pole, okay? So if you're thinking about these electrons that are being shared and they're not being shared evenly, the, the negatives are closer to chlorine because he's more electronegative. So this chlorine is going to feel more negative. He's going to have a delta minus. He feels more negative, okay? That, at least that's the way I, I like to conceptualize it, right? It's a partial negative. That little funny delta sign means partial. So it's a partial negative because technically this chlorine has more kind of sh more share of the electrons than the hydrogen, right? If this was tug of war, 
chlorine's winning tug of war. Okay, he's pulling those electrons closer to him. So this side of my bond, this side of my molecule feels negative. And now over here, hydrogen, he feels positive, right? Because the electrons are not close to him. He doesn't have electrons around him. So he, he has those electrons being pulled away from him. So negatives are being pulled away. So he's going to feel that slight positive charge, a delta plus. So this would create a, a pole, right? A polar bond. I have a positive side and a negative side of this bond. And the, the way we kind of show that is with a arrow with a little plus sign. So I actually really like this. <laughs> this is one thing that makes sense in chemistry to me, okay? Uh, we show this kind of plus sign with an arrow to show which direction our pole is, right? This is a this is a polar bond. And I like this because this kind of looks like a plus symbol, right? You see that? Which is nice because it's showing that this side is a partial positive side, right? This side is going to feel positive because those electrons are being pulled which way? Follow the arrow. They're being pulled towards the delta negative side. Okay? So, this is the difference between a nonpolar bond and a polar bond. Eventually, when we talk about this, we'll, we will show that polar molecules will attract other polar molecules. Nonpolar molecules will be attracted to other nonpolar molecules, okay? So this becomes very important in, in all kinds of chemistry, especially biochemistry, right? So the, the chem that happens within our body. Polar versus nonpolar, very, very important. Okay, now let's actually talk about polar and nonpolar molecules, all right? So it's actually really important that you understand molecular geometry, okay? You can see this chapter is huge. <laughs> That's why I, like, why I like to break it up into two pieces, all right? Um, and it's really important that you understand the geometry, the shapes that these different molecules will take because they can actually become polar or nonpolar, or they are polar or nonpolar based on their shape. A uh, good example, all right, good example would be water versus carbon dioxide, okay? All right, if I was going to draw out water, I have a hydrogen, bonded to my oxygen, bonded to another hydrogen with my two lone pairs, right? And for sure you're gonna draw it out like this and not like this, okay? So don't draw your water like this. Make sure you draw your water in a bent, uh, in a bent shape, okay? Follow your Vesper rules to show you that water actually has that bent shape, okay? This this will become important, all right? So then I have carbon dioxide. My carbon's in the middle. It's gonna make four bonds, two to this oxygen, two to this oxygen, and don't forget your lone pairs, okay? That way it shows that those oxygens have a full valence shell, okay? I'm assuming we know how to make these because we practiced this last week, right? So if you need help with making your kind of molecular shapes, all right, uh, please, please go back through last week and definitely uh, re-look at your, your Vesper models, okay? Because water is going to be bent like this and carbon dioxide is linear. If I'm trying to figure out if a molecule, a full molecule is polar or nonpolar, these shapes actually matter. And here's why, okay? If I'm looking at oxygen and the hydrogen, all right? I mean, oxygen is my second most electronegative element, but remember my trend is up and to the right. Oxygen's over here, hydrogen's over here. Oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. Okay, or you could follow your Fonkelbrisch rules. I'll just write that up top. Okay, if you remember Fonkelbrisch, right here I'm comparing oxygen to hydrogen. Oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. So oxygen is going to pull those electrons that are shared between the hydrogen and oxygen closer to him. Okay, so instead of them being an even share, oxygen's pulling them closer, which means there is a pole, right? This is a polar bond. And this is a polar bond, okay? Your hydrogen's 
feel positive, there's a partial positive, your oxygen is going to feel negative, delta negative, right? So you could draw that out, partial positives, partial negative. And overall, now if you kind of take a step back and look, it's not just these bonds that are polar, but the overall molecule is in fact polar because I have this side of my molecule that's going to be delta plus, right? I have these two delta plus sides on this whole side of my molecule. This side is definitely gonna be delta minus. There's nothing to cancel each other out. My overall bent water molecule is polar. Okay, versus carbon dioxide, okay? If I'm following my Fonkelbrisch rules, oxygen is still much more electronegative than carbon, right? So oxygen is more electronegative. It is going to pull these electrons away from, from carbon, okay? So the oxygen to the left is gonna pull electrons away from carbon. The oxygen to the right is gonna pull electrons away from carbon. All right, so that means this oxygen in my polar bond is gonna have a delta minus. Carbon's gonna have that delta plus, kind of squeeze it in there, <laughs> sorry for my drawing, okay? And this oxygen's also gonna have a delta minus, okay? But here's where it gets crazy. Because it's linear, right? Because this molecule's linear, oh, let me grab the, right? Because this guy is linear, the electrons being pulled off this way and the electrons being pulled off this way are actually going to cancel each other out, right? You can't say both sides, both the left and right of my molecule are going to be delta negative. That won't make sense. They're, they're, they cancel each other out, okay? The polar bonds are going in opposite directions, which means they cancel each other out. So this is actually going to be a non-polar molecule. And that's because of its molecular geometry. It's because it's linear, all right? So we definitely wanna be careful with our, with our Vesper models. We need to double check our polarity, all right? We're usually gonna be using typically Fonkelbrisch, okay? It makes life easier, all right? And then you have to look at the shapes and see if those, you know, poles are going to cancel each other out to determine if something is polar or nonpolar, okay? Really quickly for carbon and hydrogen, let's just look at that and that'll be it, okay? Okay, so if I had methane, CH4, right? My carbon in the middle and four hydrogens around, all right? Because technically, right, it's not like a perfect 90 degrees. This is a tetrahedral. This is all going to be nonpolar. And actually my carbon and hydrogen bonds, okay, because even though I'm looking at Fonkelbrisch, even though it lists carbon ahead of hydrogen, which is technically true, their electronegativity is so close to each other, we consider any bond between carbon and hydrogen to be nonpolar, okay? So a carbon-hydrogen bond is gonna be nonpolar, and that's because, because their electronegativity is so close, okay? So I would not consider any of these bonds to be a polar bond. I would consider all of this to be nonpolar. However, okay, if I get into this situation where I have carbon attached to two hydrogens, attached to two chlorines. Don't forget your lone pairs here. Okay, now I'm comparing chlorine and chlorine's being bonded to carbon, okay? Chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. So this is going to be a polar bond Okay, and it's going to pull those electrons towards your chlorine. So if I was going to uh, try to show you what this looks like. All right, so I tried to color two of them. You can kind of sort of see that. 
right? The blue and the gray, all right? To show that those are the chlorines and these guys are gonna be the hydrogens, all right? Now, if I drew it like this, you're showing that these electrons are going towards your chlorine, which means that this will be my overarching delta negative side and this will be my delta positive side. So you would show, oh yay, this is polar, okay? But what will inevitably happen is someone will draw it like this. Okay, can everybody see that? All right, so someone will draw it like this and they'll go like, oh good, that's a polar bond and that's a polar bond, but oh look, it's opposite directions, just like carbon dioxide, so this is gonna be nonpolar, which is what people think, okay? But remember that this is not just a flat molecule. This is tetrahedral, all right? Which means, if you can imagine this in 3D form, okay, right? This kind of setup looks like this, okay? If I was going to like exchange this to try and have it exactly opposite from this chlorine, because right now you can see this side of the molecule is gonna be negative and this side's gonna be positive, right? So let's try and exchange one. So I'm gonna move this chlorine and exchange him with this hydrogen over here. Okay, so hydrogen's gonna go on this side and chlorine's gonna come up here, all right? You'll notice this is not flat, right? This is a tetrahedral. So it doesn't matter that I exchange them. I still am gonna end up having a, a delta positive side right here with my hydrogens and a delta negative side over here with my chlorines that you can barely see that I drew on them, okay? That these would still be my chlorines and they're still going to be quote unquote next to each other, right? They're not ever going to be across from each other like this because this is a tetrahedral molecule. It's not flat, okay? So this will always be polar if you had something like this. Even if you draw it out like this, it's still polar because these don't cancel each other out because it's 3D, okay? It's not flat like if I was doing, you know, carbon dioxide. That's flat. So these guys are going to actually cancel each other out. Where did that page go? Right? These ones will actually cancel each other out because they are in the same plane and they literally go in opposite directions, okay? That's not true for tetrahedral, so be careful with that. And that's pretty much it. So you should just be able to kind of go through your different shapes that we've made, okay, of all these different molecules and then identify what are the polar and nonpolar bonds polar, nonpolar. So you could, you could label this as a polar bond and you could label this as a nonpolar bond, right? Not that we would ever make you go through a whole molecule and do that, but nonpolar bond versus polar bond. And then take a like big step back and look overall, is the molecule going to be polar or nonpolar? Okay. Right. Polar, nonpolar. Phew, and that is it for chapter five, my friends. Good luck.